Hello, in today's chalkboard video, I'm going to talk about valve overlap. And I'm going to start by saying overlap is bad. So let's first describe what overlap is. Overlap is the time period of which the intake valve and the exhaust valve are open at the same time. Now most OE cams don't have overlap. In fact, they have negative overlap, which means there's a gap between when the exhaust ends and when the intake starts. And, and they do that because overlap is bad. So why am I saying overlap is bad? There's people out there saying that overlap makes power. Overlap creates horsepower. And, and that's not really true. Now there is one little incident where it can help you increase the power. Now, that's when you have a very tuned exhaust. Now, I'm not talking your cast iron manifold. I'm not even talking your shorty header. I'm talking a full length tuned header, properly sized, properly length, usually open. So we're talking drag strip mostly. Um, you can generate a vacuum and that vacuum can start to pull on the intake cycle. Now, that happens way up here because the air running through the header has to be really high speed in order to generate that vacuum. So the only place it works up here is up here at all. And, and if you've got, like I said, cast iron manifolds or shorty header, you, you barely got the exhaust put together, it's full length exhaust, you've got a muffler, you've got a resonator, that's probably not going to happen. So, overlap is bad. You don't want the overlap. It's not actually even generating what we're talking about. The exhaust is generating that vacuum. We're just, if you're way up here at the, the high RPM and you're trying to make use of it, as you slightly increase the overlap, you can give it a little more time. But it's not the overlap that's generating the power. So, why is it that people are saying, well, overlap makes power. You know, a really tight lobe center with overlap really makes power. It's because they don't quite understand what's going on, and that's why I decided to make this video. So, the overlap is not really what's creating the problem. They're, they're misseeing what's going on. They are correct about the tight lobe center, and we've talked about the 75 degree event before. The 75 degree event is probably the most important event. And that's the fill on the cylinder at peak piston speed. Now it varies a little bit, it's not always right at 75, but we, we so generally just work in that area that the exact number doesn't matter. You can calculate it out if you need to. But the fill at 75 is what really gives you that initial horsepower boost, that, that boost in in torque. Now your peak power, remember, is going to be caused by the intake closing point. But we're not really worried about that. Because what I'm talking about is motors that work down here. We're talking about motors that on a dyno, if you want, if you look at a dyno test, dyno test is probably from maybe 2500 up. Uh, maybe even 3000 or 4000 up. And what that's really testing is wide open throttle at uh, mid-range and peak power. Now, if you're a drag racer, that's fantastic. I mean, that's right where you're at. But on a lot of us, in a general driver, you know, you're down here. You're down here off idle to, to maybe 2,500. You know, and, and there are other applications that are even performance-oriented where you are working down here. Um, you, you could have a rock crawler truck that works at just barely off idle as you kind of creep through stuff. Even if you're in, in four low and first gear, you're still just working right down here. You know, or uh, airboat that, that has a direct drive prop. Well, that's going to be RPM limited. And of course that depends on the prop, but the upper limit may be only 3,500 RPM depending on the prop. And so again, you're working down here. Now, at least on the airboat, you're working at like two-thirds or, or full throttle. A lot of times when we're working down here, we're not even really talking about full throttle. So even if you could dyno test all the way down here, you know, we're, we're not necessarily talking about what you would see on a dyno. 
You're talking about how it behaves, heart throttle response, how much torque it produces. I mean, we're all working down here a lot of times. And, and down here, overlap is bad. So you want to try and avoid it as much as possible. Now, another application, which could be a very difficult application for some people, might be like a truck that you're toying with. You want to pull that 16,000 pound RV so you can go out in the woods and rough it. And on top of everything else, you put in a big block and you put in an overdrive transmission. Well, you're suddenly working way down here. You're practically lugging the motor when you're out cruising on the freeway. And so when it comes to camshafts, the question is, what do you want to do? If you're working way down here, if you're working at part throttle, or even if you're working at full throttle down here on like an airboat, what can you do to really help low end? Well, when you're talking low end power, you're talking about fillet 75. And like I said, we've talked about this before. You want to try and maximize your fillet 75. So you don't really care about the intake closing. This is your peak power, and you can bring this up. In fact, bringing this up will actually help some of your low speed because you can get, at right off idle, you can not get reversion if you push this event out too far. So when you look at a regular RV cam, you know, when we, we all talk about RV cams in these terms. Well, an RV cam will close up the lobe centers from factory and try and give you a little bit more duration. And so if we look at why, you know, if you're way out here, you know, factory lobe center may be 115 degrees. If you close that up to even comps regular 110 degree, which they do a lot of stuff on, but if you go to that 110 degree lobe center in here, well, without having overlap, because remember, overlap is bad, without having overlap, that then limits you to about 220 degrees of duration. And that's probably going to be more like a single pattern cam because if you pump in a bunch of exhaust duration, you could start pushing it this way. And you don't want that because that will create overlap. So on a typical RV cam, when we're looking at them, you, you are looking on a tighter load center and a little bit more duration but with no overlap. So when you look at these numbers, you will see that an RV cam, like I said, if it's on 110 load center, will be under 220 duration. It may be, you know, 218, 219 even, but a lot of times it's like 217, and they may even go down to like 208 or 211. But they're basically trying to give you just a little bit more duration and a tighter lobe center to increase the fill at 75 degrees. Now that'll certainly work. I mean, they do what they're supposed to do. Uh, compared to a stock camshaft, an RV cam has better fill at 75. Now you can push it a little further. And on say a small block Chevy, the question becomes, do you need to? If you're running regular iron heads and you maybe don't even have port work done to them, then you may need to push the event a little more. If you're running really good aluminum heads on a small block Chevy, and an RV cam that's got you know an okay lift and and maybe it's even a, a hydraulic roller so you've got a little more lift and a little quicker ramp speed it'll work just fine with a regular RV cam but when you get into something that's more restricted and, and you could consider you know like a, a small block Chevy truck motor with a small valve somewhat restricted but everybody knows I'm kind of a Cadillac guy. So let's switch over to the Cadillac world for a minute. And, and the Cadillac is a restricted motor. It, it does not have a lot of airflow for the cubic inch displacement of the motor. And so when that's true, then you've got to harp even a little more on this 75 fill point in order to generate more low end power. And so what you can do is tighten up the lobe center even further. Instead of being on like a 110 lobe center, you start looking at something that's like on a 106 or a 104 or even a 102. 
and that will bring it in closer to this 75 fill point. But one of the problems with that is overlap is bad. So if you then do that, say you run on like a, a 104 lobe center, and it's real tight in here, well then you're limited to not have a lot of overlap. Now when I'm talking about a lot of overlap, I'm not talking two or three degrees. I mean, four degrees even isn't really that much. That might affect your idle a little bit, but as soon as you get going, that small amount is, is not going to get into the power bank. Because as overlap goes up, the RPM that the motion motor functions well at goes up. And so if you can just minimize overlap as much as possible, you will keep the RPM down here lower where you might need it. So if we say 4 degrees is okay, you start talking, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And, and if you get into big cams, I mean, if you start talking drag racing where you don't care about this low end, I mean, you're talking 50, 60 degrees of overlap. And remember, I talk at 50. I, I talk at 50,000 tap and lift. So it just keeps moving up the power band. Now, it's not that the overlap is going to really help you up here unless you do something else. So I just try and avoid overlap for a lot of general builds. Um, that helps it behave itself well down here at part throttle, just off throttle, cruising around, and yet you'll still have the power when you stand on it, you know, if you work the cam out the way you want. But when we're talking about just generating power down here, especially like a kit, say you're a cruiser, you don't have a lot of gear in a Cadillac, you, it's already a big motor, so it's kind of generating low end power. But what would you do to increase it even more? And we talked about the fill at 75. Well, if you don't want overlap, then if you run like a 104 lobe center, then you're only talking like, you know, 206, 208, 210 degrees of, of duration uh, on the camshaft. And that will help because that helps the fill at 75. Now, CAD company has camshafts just like that. Because that's exactly what they do. They all work way down here. You know, it's basically, you know, consider it the RV cam for the Cadillac. It's, the idea is to try and boost the power down here as much as you can where you're cruising. Because you could drive around all day and never get over 3,000 RPM. So you're all just working down here. And so a camshaft like that will work. Now, there are other ways to try and generate a little bit more. If you're not worried about valve to piston clearance at TDC, you could try and push the intake opening event further this way in order to get it more open, I know, wrong a lot of words, open further at 75 degrees, then you can increase the amount of fill. Now on a motor with a good head, you're, you can max out this fill. I mean, you can only fill the cylinder as much as you can fill the cylinder. But on like a Cadillac, you really can't flow enough air to truly get it full. So you keep going up in power. You know, the, the 500 is more than capable of making 625 foot-pounds of torque if you can get the fill going. And so you want to try and maximize that out. But overlap is bad, and if we start pushing the intake opening to this side, then suddenly we're on a tight lobe center with exhaust, and, and we're closing these in, because we went from remember factory 115 down to like 104, and we're, we're closing this in, and that's going to create overlap. But there's another way. Even if you're at like a 110 lobe center or 112. Let's say you, you choose a 112 lobe center camshaft. And you're like, well, wait a minute, you're going the wrong way. You're going this way. Give me a minute. So on a 112 lobe center, you could run as much as 224 degrees of duration and not have overlap. So what you then do in order to get a tight lobe center, because it's not the lobe center being tight. It's not tight this way that you need to generate that low power. 
It's that you need it tight to this 75 degree. Now remember, exhaust is way down here. Exhaust duration is not, I mean, the duration can spill over up here. But the exhaust cycle is not up here at TDC. It's way down here. And so if you push the exhaust out of the way, then you can run no overlap and still have a tight lug center. And that's what advance is about. So if you advance a camshaft, you run it on, you have a cam ground on, on 112 lobe center, but you advance it four degrees, it'll actually sit at 108 lobe center. Now you could even go, if it's advanced, if it's ground in to the cam, advanced four degrees. You could then run the advanced key and go another four degrees and actually install it on a 108. Now that's going to push the exhaust cycle way this way. And that's not going to hurt anything. Now, as you pull this down, it will get louder. And so that's the only thing to really think about. But the exhaust cycle is down here. So if we're on a 112, 112 lobe center, ground on a 112, then we push it eight degrees. That's going to put the exhaust on like a 120 lobe center, which is fun. That, that pushes the exhaust out of your way and you avoid overlap, but then you can start opening the intake valve on this side of TDC. Now remember, every time you go this way on TDC, from TDC, you need to worry about valve to piston clearance. So you've only got so much room. Now in a Cadillac, if you're running say, an open chamber head, 75, 76, you've got enough breathing room that you can pretty well play around with this and not have big problems. If you're running one of the earlier motors with the closed chamber head, you might have to look and see how much breathing room, or if you build the, the motor, you might have to run a piston that actually has a valve relief in it, so you've got a little more breathing room for the intake valve opening event. But just talking about what happens, is as you push it this way and the intake valve starts opening over here, it winds up much higher lift at the 75 point because you've got more time. And that gives you a better fill from TDC through 75, which helps your low end power. So that really gains you by, by advancing or what I call super advancing a camshaft. Now, typically they used to say, that if you advance a camshaft more than four degrees, it's the wrong camshaft. Well, that was in a magazine article back in, I think, in the early 90s, maybe the late 80s. You know, I mean, we're talking 30 years ago. And, and we have since learned that's not true. And in racing, a lot of times, we retard the cam in order to not only give us more breathing room at TDC for valve clearance, but that pushes this event down and gives you more top end power. And that's why advance and retard will kind of shift what the engine's going to do. Because remember, the camshaft's the brain of the operation. It's deciding kind of where the power occurs, whether you're concentrating up here on fill or whether you're concentrating downhill here on fill. So retarding a cam pushes this out, which gains you more power and gives you a little more clearance at TDC. Whereas advancing a cam going this way gives you a, a better lobe center at 75 and gives you a better fill at 75, which helps your low end power. But you have to avoid overlap if you're working down here. If you're working on a driver, if you're working on even a street strip car, remember a street strip car is really down here through mid range. You know, it, it's not really about upper end. It's down here. And, and when you look at these dyno tests, it's hard for you to, to realize sometimes when you're talking bottom end, you're talking about the bottom of the mid range. You're not talking about bottom end, bottom end. And so you've got to remember some of this stuff when you're looking at it. You know, the dyno is good for testing up here, but it's really hard for it to work down here and show you what's going on. Especially since, like I said earlier, it may not even be a wide open throttle. I mean, you may be talking about drivability, park throttle, 
you know, keep eating off of idol, all that. And, and that's down here. And, and during that time, overlap is bad. And so you really need to try and pick a cam that avoids that if you have that, that option. And uh, like I said, Catco has some specifically designed with this thinking. A really tight lobe center, a, uh, a low overlap, and so it's a small cam, and a uh, tight lobe center. Now, on his cams, he's tightened up both lobe centers. But part of that is because of Cadillac, you don't really want always to have a noisy exhaust. You will get a louder exhaust as you push the event this way. Now, it can help you way up here, but it, it will make it a little louder. And, and I know a lot of you like the rumpy rump sound, and that is overlap. But you need to realize that that is uh, actually a poor running motor. You know, it's a contaminated charge. We like the sound. We like the sound because it it makes us think of a, a big bad motor that's making lots of power. But remember, that's making lots of power up here. And, and there are camshafts like the Thumper that try and give you just enough contamination that it upsets idle without upsetting just off idle. They, they try and do some little tricks so that once the motor actually gets running, it's okay. But at idle, you have that rumpity rump, and that'd be like a thumper can. But in general, I try and avoid overlap if I'm building a regular motor. And, and sometimes guys don't like it because it doesn't sound like anything, but they are very well behaved. The, the more you can avoid the overlap, the better the motor will behave itself way down here and and in the general running area. And that's why I tend to say overlap is bad. And, and it's not really bringing a lot to the table. You know, like I said, you may like the sound. If you really were racing and tuning the exhaust and making it work, then yeah, you might want to look at having a little bit of overlap in there. But in general, it's a bad thing and you want to try and avoid it. And there's nothing wrong with advancing a cam if it's going to look good. I mean, you have to look at the events. As long as you're not pulling this way up in here, then you can advance a cam and gain fill at 75. And you can see even in one of the videos that I did with the stalker cam, that's part of the reason I was trying to twist the stock cam into a more favorable position, is to help this fill at 75, even though it's only a 200 degree cam. I mean, it's not very big, but I'm trying to get the most out of it I can. And that will help how it runs. That helps way down here where your first notice. So remember, you know, basically overlap is bad. It's not bringing a lot of, of uh, power to the table. In fact, it's not bringing any power to the table. It's not really helping you. The, the fill at 75 is what people mistake. You know, they run a tight lobe center and they get a motor that runs better. That's because of the fill. It doesn't mean you need that exhaust. It doesn't mean you need the overlap. Overlap is technically bad. And so I prefer to push the exhaust out of the way, limit the overlap, try and get a real good fill at 75, not worry too much about intake closing or peak power if I'm just working in, in low and mid range and you wind up with a really nice running engine. I mean, that makes it behave itself really well and gets you something above what the stock will do, and this can even get you a little bit more above what uh, RV cam will gain you. Now, remember, like I said, if you're running like a small block Chevy, a really good high flowing head and uh, a regular RV cam, you could be maxing out, maxing out at 75, especially if it's a 350. Now, if you're building a 400 or 420 or something, something that's bigger, then maybe not so much so. But there is a limit to how much you can get, and usually torque-wise, that's like uh, one and a quarter foot-pounds of torque per cubic inch. Now, you can get above that. I, I have done like one. Three, four, um, 
but you really got to play around in order to to really maximize the torque higher than that. That's the general number in regular fill that you will be able to make. So that's my my deal. Overlap is bad. When you're looking at camshafts, try and avoid uh, a camshaft that has a lot of overlap. It's not there to help you. Um, if you're building a motor or getting a cam ground, you know, loop in your vents, make sure that you're not dialing it on a bunch of overlap because the more you have, the more trouble you're going to have down here. And if that's where you're working, then you need to be careful, especially, you know, if you're an airport guy, you're working down here. So, um, you need to really be careful, and that's overlap is bad. Talk to you later. Bye.